welcome back learners to this virtual lab and today in my virtual lab i will be discussing about your sputum examination sputum examination and this is very important in for the students who are studying medical microbiology as well as the students who are a part of your pathological labs and where they have to interpret various results you know that people suffer from respiratory tract infection right and there are many respiratory tract infection which mainly comprise of pneumonia even some of the severe infections like your tuberculosis so if you uh, think of those you know that one of the very important aspect of diagnosing those disease is your sputum examination is your sputum examination is the presence of the microorganism in your sputum sample so there lies the importance of this particular practical in your medical microbiology and even to the medical lab technician who are working in the pathological lab so first i will start with what is your sputum so if you uh, think of what is your sputum sputum is nothing but a mucus so sputum is a mucus that is cuffed up from the lower airways so you know that uh, sputum is cuffed up from the lower airways or lower respiratory tract lower airways okay and this process is known as this particular process where you are cuffing up a particular mucus from your lower airways and this process is called as your sputilization so this is your sputilization right and in medicine sputum samples are usually used for microbiological investigation of your respiratory tract infection so basically this is being done to determine the respiratory tract infection so first it is being used for your respiratory tract infection and another important aspect you know in the respiratory tract in apart from respiratory tract infection is your cytological investigation so these are some of the very important aspect of your sputum examination so that is why we are so concerned about your sputum examination now you know that when i'm talking of sputum examination i give a some of the brief description of your sputum examination which need to be taken into account and that is your there are two types of sputum physical description of a good sputum so there is one important parameter good sputum and bad quality sputum you may be having thick sputum and thin watery sputum so good sputum so it is classified as purulent sputum purulent sputum so what is this purulent sputum that is contains pus composed of white blood cells cellular debris dead tissue serous fluid viscous liquid right so one of the major constituent of this purulent uh, purulent sputum is your pus okay now you know that purulent sputum is typically yellow or green so you know sometimes when you have cough and cold and severe cough you have green sputum doctor ask you that what type of sputum are you spitting out whether it is your yellow color sputum or it is a white or it is your green sputum so purulent sputum is typically yellow or green okay so this the color of the sputum is very important and it is seen in case of bronchitis or acute upper respiratory tract infection so they are basically being seen in your bronchitis so it suggest certain types of your respiratory infection like that of your bronchitis bronchitis okay bronchitis acute upper respiratory tract infection like common cold so don't be afraid students it can be common cold as well 
and your laryngitis. So these are some of the aspects of your sputum test. So next we will move on to the collection of the sputum and when we move on to the collection of the sputum, we know that this is the procedure which I have seen, I have uh, uh, collected it. You know that sometimes sputum is also collected in an invasive manner. So when they are collected in an invasive manner, you know that there is a sputum port and there is a suction tubing. And with the help of suction catheter, the sputum is sucked out. The sputum trap is connected to the suction catheter to collect the sputum using oropharyngeal or endotracheal suctioning. So this is an invasive method, right? But if you collect sputum in a non-invasive way, then you can also use this type of procedure. First step, the step one, position the patient upright in a chair or in bed in a polar position. You see, this is the position. Then a sodium chloride nebulizer can help loosen your secretion. So you have to loosen the secretion. It should not be that much tough, otherwise it cannot cough out. And then ask the patient to take deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth to help loosen the sputum. And last but not the least is collect the specimen in the pot and seal it with a lead. So you take the specimen in the pot and seal it with a lead to prevent contamination and reduce the risk of your cross infection. So to reduce the risk of your cross infection or any other, you know, from the air also it can enter, the organism can enter into the sputum. It may not be a part of the sputum. So while collection, we should keep into account, right? So next, we will move on. So this is the collection procedure. Next, we will move on to that interpretation part. So, you know, that uh, physical appearance I have told you, okay, uh, just to give you a brief description of your physical appearance of the sputum, just from the sputum, how can you determine the diseases and that is, you know, it is, if it is your bloody, bloody sputum, blood is coming out. So, what can be the uh, inference it may be pulmonary TB pulmonary that is the most important thing the pulmonary tuberculosis right lungs abscess so lungs abscess then there is bronchogenic carcinoma so from carcinoma it can also happen pulmonary infraction so these are the two important thing I will highlight over here now, if it is a rusty colored sputum, so rusty colored sputum, then it is your pneumococcal lobar pneumonia. So, pneumococcal pneumonia. Okay. Then is your red currant jelly. So, red jelly like sputum. So, that is your klebsiella. So you understand that just, just following the texture of the sputum, you can actually understand that what type of infection you are having. Green colored sputum, pseudomonas, pseudomonas, okay. Purulent, purulent sputum, which I have already discussed. That is your pneumonia can be a reason and your lung abscess. Okay, next is pink and frothy, pink and frothy, okay, so that is your pulmonary edema. So students, please go through it very carefully because these are some of the important points we need to understand while we analyze just by the observation, just by the color of the sputum, you can have an anticipation that this type of microorganism may be there in your, in the, or in the particular sputum. Now for microbiological examination, microbiological examination, you know, that the first important thing is that normal flora of the oral cavity and pharynx, that is also there in your sputum. So what can you do? What type of staining you can do? That is your gram staining. So you can go for your 
gram staining. So here I will relate this with your normal microbial flora. If you remember your normal microbial flora, it may be Staphylococcus aureus and Epidermidis, Streptococcus viridens, right? Diphtherioids, Enterococci, Micrococci, Lactococci, Lactobacilli, and yeast. So this can be easily differentiated by your gram staining. And those are basically gram positive. But if I talk of Neuseria, Haemophilus influenzae, so those are basically gram negative. So we can simply determine by your gram staining the basic pathogens, right? Then we will move on to your analysis. Now, if you uh, see your analysis, I know you know it very well that if it is Streptococcus pneumoniae, can anybody tell me what can be the analysis of the structure? It is gram positive diplococci. So you will have diplococci, okay, with surrounding clear place. So, if it is Staphylococcus aureus, so you will have a bunch of grapes. So, it will be like a bunch of grapes. If it is Candida, you will have budding yeast. So, you will have a budding yeast. Okay. So, if it is Haemophilus influenza, gram negative Coccobacilli. So, it will be Coccobacilli. So, gram negative Coccobacilli is your Haemophilus influenza. So, like this way, you can analyze initially. Next is that, you know, then you go for the culture. So, culture of the sputum. So, next is your culture of the sputum or culturing of the sputum. So, culturing of the sputum basically comprise of, should contain less than 25 squamous cells per low power field as less than 10 squamous cells per high power field. So, what you do is that in this method, so in this method, culturing, Inoculate the sample. So, you take the sample, the sputum sample. Okay. So, you can dilute it if you want and you inoculate it into blood agar. You know that most of the organism which causes your respiratory tract infection are fastidious group of organism and they will be easily grown in your blood agar or chocolate agar. Okay. You can do that. And then you incubate at atmosphere of extra carbon dioxide. So, you incubate, you know that they are anaerobic, so you will incubate under carbon dioxide and inspect plate. So, you will inspect your plate after 18 hours, okay. So, growth, if growth is significant, so if you get to have a growth on that of your plate, then you go for your antibiotic sensitivity because you know that initially when you have those symptoms, doctor will prescribe you antibiotics and when they don't get any result from this antibiotic, then they go for the sputum analysis to see that any drug resistant microorganisms are there in your sputum or not. So, once there is a profound growth in your sputum, then antibiotic sensitivity is a must. Okay. Then again, another aspect of your sputum that we cannot forget, cannot forget when you have blood in the sputum is your acid fast, acid fast bacteria acid fast bacteria so for this acid fast bacteria we can go for your zeal zeal nelson staining so we can as, uh, do the uh, isolate the mycobacterium tuberculosis or bacilli by zeal nelson staining so you know that Smear is prepared with black tinge, opaque, grayish, yellowish portion of the sputum and stained with your Zeal Nelson stain. You know it is having a primary stain and counter stain. That is another aspect, acid fast staining. And you see it under microscope. Okay. So if you see that you get to see organisms which is positive for the test, right? That means, you know, that mycobacteria appears bright red color. So mycobacteria appears bright red color okay slightly curved or red beaded rods 2 to 4 micrometer in length and 0 0.2 to 0 0.5 micrometer wide so 2 to 4 micrometer in length okay and you are at least and you, if you see this in a blood green background then of course it is tuberculosis that is mycobacterium tuberculosis so like this way, we can do the sputum analysis 
and can determine various microorganisms in your sputum which is responsible for radiation.